Oh, and it top takes the fucking 7 5. Second 5. This guy is so bad. Holy oh, shit, this guy is bad. The fact that I've had maybe 5 or some games play out this kind of way has been beyond disappointing. Rage. <clears throat> it's not really fun to play games like this. BJ Song. The RNG in this game is so fucking one-sided, it's disgusting. Baby, what? The RNG in this game is so fucking one-sided. I can confirm that. What is up, everyone? And welcome to Tavern Talk, THL's first and only official recap show. It's finals week. Um, and, and you know what? I, I forgot to change the text on our, our playoff hype. Playoff hype is here. It is here to stay. But also with us this evening is the one and only Alec from Golden Wisp. We're going to get with him in here in uh, just a little bit. We have some awesome rules for those of you who are 21 and over tonight. Um, anytime we mention infinite value, so your tiny fins and your wisps, they're going to cause a little alcoholic uh, inebriation to happen. Whenever I decide that I want to agree with Cassie and Slimch, whether it's uh, knowingly or not, apparently I agree with them whether I actually do or not. Usually when I do that, guys, it's because I'm not paying attention. Whatever one of us drinks, it doesn't matter the reason. Oftentimes I get bored and somebody hasn't broken a rule in a while, so I like to drink some alcohol. When one of us drinks, you're drinking too. I just did, by the way. Amazing, Slimch. Uh, and whenever Cassidy says his new catchphrase, apparently, flags fly forever. Flags fly forever. <laughs> it's going to be a fucking great night, guys. Um, I am your host, Jack Six, with my, my lovely eye candy here, as always. Uh, the Bearded Beauty, how you doing tonight, Slimsh? Oh, eye candy, if you say so. I'm doing pretty good. Dude, look at you. You're beautiful. I can't take it. The way, the way that beard goes with that jacket, it's gorgeous. Uh, and as always, taking his spot right down there, Mr. Cassidy, how's it going? Uh, it was going really good, and then I spilled some beer, so I'm going to grab a towel. And oh. uh, remember, though, <laughs> beer gets spilled, but flags fly forever. <laughs> and uh, joining us uh, down there in the guest spot, is the one and only Mr. Alec. Alec, how are you, sir? What's up, guys? Very excited to be on Tavern Talk. This should be a great show. Yeah. Dude, really pumped to have you. Um, we've tried to have Alec on before, for those who are sitting here crying about it. Um, we just haven't been able to make it match up. And you know what? I don't think there's any more appropriate time than right now to have probably... Damn right. <laughs> probably the hottest player in THL at the moment um, on the show. So... Let, let's get right to it. Let, let's get right into the mind and the madness that is Mr. Alec. Um, so first off, we got to give you shameless plug time. Um, we know that, you know, it's in your name. For anybody that's got you on the friends list, we know you do this Golden Wisp thing. What's, what's Golden Wisp all about, dude? Yeah, so Golden Wisp is a competitive Hearthstone podcast. So, you know, I got tired of listening to Angry Chicken and them go ad nauseum about random stuff. And me and my buddy Hunter just wanted to do something that actually focused on competitive play. So we've been doing it for over a year now. It's been really great. A lot of fun. Awesome. Um, is there any sort of a, a plug for a site or, or a platform where you want people to go rack up those views or, or uh, listens? I guess Twitter would be the best, you know, just at GW Podcast. There's all our stuff there. Um, links to like where you can get iTunes and stuff, things like that. I mean, honestly, I just want people to check it out, see if they like it, especially some of the THL guys, because I think it's right up our alley. This is, you know, I'm here, I'm playing everything. This is what we do. We can talk about Hearthstone every week, and we play it pretty competitively. So I think you guys would like it. Yeah, so I, I mean, I actually, I'm not going to lie. I've, I've slacked on a lot of my uh, reaching out to the people that have been helping the TH grow throughout our history. Uh, but I actually checked out you guys and, and Top Deck uh, Kings for the first time. Um, I think it was actually last week now. And both programs, man, um, definitely like quality stuff. I'm not going to lie. A little bit of what you guys talked about was a little over my head, but I'm getting there. I'm getting there, <laughs> which it just tells me I need to study up a little bit before I, before I dive in there. But that's the kind of stuff I, I look for as a, a player trying to get better is people such as yourself tell me exactly how to do that um so golden wisp check it out at golden wisp podcast on twitter all right noob central 
That's right. Noob Central, we don't baby. want. We don't want to be in the playoffs. We don't want to be in the playoffs. We don't want to be in the playoffs. Just fucking kidding. <laughs> We're in the playoffs, and we are going up against Archon Storm. How has this roller coaster of a season been for you guys? I mean, yeah, we didn't think we were going to make the playoffs, right? And then I forget who we were playing, but they had a bunch of DQs, like two DQs. Or, or uh, her DQs strategy, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they had a bunch of DQs. So we're like, guys, we can do this. And then we just won. We won our match. I think we actually went 5-0 on that week. Mm-hmm. So once we did that, we're like, all right, we're in the playoffs. And then we played Archon Storm, and, I mean, we kind of beat up them pretty good, too. Oh, man, that was so fun. You did. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you guys have very clearly had the easiest path of any team to um, <laughs> reach the finals. You know, like you had cakewalk first round in Archon Storm. You had, you know, cake round number two with, with Zenergy. The runners up from Season Kappa. Um, so, you know, definitely wasn't a challenge at all. You guys were probably sure to, to win the whole time. Um, but let's be real. You guys have faced some pretty amazing opponents in the postseason. Um, was there ever a moment where Noob Central was kind of afraid or feeling doubt? Like, you know, you're up against the defending champions and then the defending runner up. Was there ever a point where you guys kind of were thinking we might not pull through? I mean, not really because we never – we were afraid of being because we never had anything to lose, Right. And that's that was our position. We got into the playoffs. We're like, oh wow, we made the playoffs. We weren't one of the worst teams in the league this year. Cool, right? And then from then on, we're like, all right, let's just prove them wrong again, play our game. Because I think we at that time we'd all been on kind of on a little bit of a roll. So once we got that clicking, I think we weren't scared of anybody. And at the same time, everyone doubted us. And now we're here in the finals. And but we actually have a pretty high PR, I think, as a team compared to Team Rank Five. Yeah, you guys have a huge PR now, especially after winning. Like you guys. I think last week you were the highest of the four teams left after beating Archon Storm. It's that five seed, man. That five seed. Yeah, right. So, wow. You know, <laughs> um, one of arguably the best. I I think uh, Slimsh and I were talking about this earlier. Or no, you know what? I just confused Slimsh with uh with Brunson. Um, easily made mistake. But we were actually talking about just how good uh Katoda is. Um, and not that, you know, any of the one seeds that you've, you've faced this postseason are, are slouches, but, um, Katota being so highly regarded around the THL, was there extra motivation, uh, behind your, your lovely little sweep of him or did it really not matter who was in front of you? You were out for blood. Um, which Katota was interesting because I played him earlier in the season and I hadn't really, gotten the ropes to teach out just yet in terms of the format and things like that. I actually lost to a, I lost to a disconnect and he was like he was super nice about it. He's like, you can take it. I was like, no, I DC'd, so like you take it. I actually ended up being a three two. Mm-hmm. But that DC was like huge in the matchup. So I just wanted to prove that I could beat him again. I think the biggest part for me was, you know, after losing to Slimsh, I like had to come back. Like I got O three, it was terrible and from then on, I think I've been on quite a little tear, though. I would, I would say, uh, what, what's his playoff record? Six and zero. Yeah, Six I would call, take, I would call that a little out. bit of a tear. I think what happened here was our undefeated one seat in Slimsh didn't get to make it to the playoffs, so somebody had to kind of pick up that banner and run with it. You know, I, I was there. <laughs> oh, I'm <laughs> sorry, you guys got knocked out so early, I forget. Um. <laughs> Ouch! At least we made it. <laughs> It hurts because it's true. <laughs> but but Slimsh does have a championship, and Entropy doesn't, and flags do fly forever. So flags, flags do, fly, do forever. fly forever. <laughs> um, and and I think this is a a a question from I want to say Cassidy, right? Or was it Slimsh? Which one? It was Cassidy that was on the Noobs, right? Yeah, he's green. I was. Yes. Yeah. I was on the so, Noobs last season. They does... replaced me with a much better player. Clearly. <laughs> <laughs> does Josh Joss Rue still put together the best spreadsheets around? Yeah, dude, those spreadsheets are they still amazing? Yeah, they're awesome. Like every week, we I know what you're gonna bring, you know, and I know what you're gonna ban, and at the same time, like it helps everyone, especially the people mm-hmm. that may not, you know, do the research themselves. It's like, okay, I check Facebook once, and this is what my opponent most likely will bring. Mm-hmm. It's such a leg up, I think. Definitely. 
Yeah, it, it definitely helps to have a captain that's got their shit He's got him out, like, Sunday night. Like, we don't even know how the rest of the league has done, and Joss has the matchups. He's like, all right, guys, got him done for you. <laughs> it's the best. It's such a crutch. Got him. So, the week, the week that was the semifinals, right? Um, very, once again, a very exciting weekend. Uh, those who were hanging out in Discord, we kind of got the play-by-play. We didn't have as many matches streamed as we would like. But if you were in Discord, which in a moment here, I'll, I'll stop being lazy uh, and post it for you guys. Or I'm pretty sure Slim, per the usual, come through in the clutch with a link to Discord for me. Uh, we got the live updates, and it was an exciting weekend. Uh, and I would, I think we got to bring it up, and we got to talk about it. Seeing as we have the man sitting right here and Mr. Cassidy. Uh-oh. Team Rank 5 shows up in a big way. Um, but somebody took some damn antibiotics and the UTI was, was leashed. He was Slim called that. Um, <laughs> Andy Rogers put him on a leash and that's okay. Uh, Mange was also swept by Jedi, which I don't think anybody saw coming in a sweep, but we, we squeaked through, we got the win. Jesus took down to Trucci, who was known as one of being the, the top five seeds in the league. And Jesus beat him. Murdoch did his thing. And, um, I played some pretty decent Hearthstone and was able to get boom, boom, and we, we move on just barely. And so I feel really good because the two guys that lost last week are the two guys we're really counting on this week, and they're going to bounce back and do their job, and we'll see where it goes from there. Uh, now, here's a question I had for you, right? So and I know Mage. I know Mage. Um, he's playing his match against Jedi, and you guys have it locked up, right? Mm-hmm. Now, he's never one to, to lose a game and be happy about it. But do you think, knowing that the finals is already locked up, do you think that played any role in him maybe looking forward to the finals? Um, I mean, he came into Discord swearing and ready to throw things. So I, <laughs> I don't think it really made that big of a difference. He was not happy when I talked to him about it. Uh, he drew really, really poorly. Jedi played really, really well, and Mange looked down, and it was 3-0, and hopefully he, he tunes down the hots a little bit the next couple days and gets in the practice gym, and he's ready to go this time. All right. Call- no, there's no skamaz going on here. <laughs> Calling out the hots. <sighs> uh, <laughs> um, but you brought up a hot. great point, though, with, with Jesus. Um, and you've said yourself several times, the guy is hot right now. He's on a tear and definitely showing that he's been putting in the time to improving at this game. Um, do you expect more of the same out of Jesus in the championship? Uh, he is severely. Oh, yeah. Big time. Um, I don't want to say outmatched here because that's not the word I'm looking for. But if you look at the PR, it feels that way. Do you think he continues to carry the confidence of his recent performances into this final? Or do you think this is where Jesus is? I, I know I know you're on the team, so I know bias is your <laughs> one pull for your boy here. But trying to look at it objectively, but also knowing what practice has been like for Jesus, how do you see this matchup playing out? Uh, well, Jesus is, like you said, he does practice a lot and he does play a lot. Hey Zeus, we got a we got a taste of this when he was talking to Grim. He loves to just get amped up for like no apparent reason and then use that to kind of fuel his play. And he's kind of been a little down in that regard this week because he's like, oh man, this PR, I'm gonna lose, whatever. And we Alec brought this point up earlier. We just said, look, man, like you're not favored, so you have nothing to lose. Just go in there, play your game. And he kind of took that advice and like he's been holding his own at like rank five on ladder. And for Jesus, that's like a huge deal. And so we we expect him to go in there, do his thing. And if he steals a win, we're going to feel really good about it. But if he doesn't, um, like we're not expecting him to. So he's really just kind of playing with house money. And, and, you know, so we have Cassie here of Team Rank 5. And for those who aren't playing along at home and weren't listening to the beginning of this show, Alec is sitting over at the top of the one spot uh, of Noob Central. Uh, and Alec, I have to imagine you guys are feeling pretty good about this five-spot matchup. Uh, I know as I go into each week, I kind of get these ideas in my head. I don't want to call them um, locked-in wins, but wins that you kind of are counting on and you're doing mm-hmm. the math on the rest of the team. 
Mm-hmm. Is what's your guys? Do you think the five spot is that sure of a win, or are you guys intimidated or concerned about Jesus's recent performances? I think the five spot has been treating us very well. Uh, so if we get a win there, I'm very happy. But I think a lot of times it does come down to like if we get one in five and then somewhere else. That's kind of like our strategy, I think, in going into this one. If you all right, so one in five. I all right, I had to. Stop and think about what you said there for a second. So that would be two of the most favored matchups in um, this lineup. Mm-hmm. Would be would be mm-hmm. Alexing at the one over our very own Cassidy. Oh yeah, that's a big <laughs> underdog, especially <laughs> after that last match. Oh man, I'm nervous. Um, and now Cassidy, this is I, I don't mean to keep playing on the five spot, but Team Rank Five's philosophy for most of this season has been not philosophy, but the way it seems to go is. All right, if we win the one spot, nice, but we're not going to count on the one spot win. We yep. need to win three out of those other four. Yep. And Jesus has been a pretty reliable go-to guy as of late. Now, mm-hmm. you look down at the rest of your lineup. You literally have a perfect PR coin flip between Imbolc and Cutthroat. We do, uh, but I would put Imbolc. I, I think Imbolc is one of the best players in the league. Um, I certainly think he's the best player on the team. And so that that four fourteen PR, I think it's a little, it's a little, uh, it's lying a little bit. And I think most people that have played against him would probably agree with that. So if I was looking at this, I'm, I love the way our teams match up because one and five are what they go for, and two, three, and four are what we like to go for. And so like, I don't see how this matchup doesn't end up three two in favor of either team. And it's going to come down to who swings a matchup that they shouldn't win because I think ultimately like. If you have to pick, I'm going to lose. Jesus is going to lose. I think Mange is going to win. I think Murdoch's going to win. And that in bulk matchup is probably the deciding factor. And so uh, we reined him in a little bit. You know, we had to, we brought him inside. He was running a little too wild, put him back on the leash. But now he's, he's kind of chomping at the bit, you know, and we're going to let him go and he's going to go do his thing. So we're ready for that. So, Slimps, you are a resonant, uh, neutral, actually informed party. I, yeah. I sit here and like to play around with the numbers and what I, I know of these guys, but as somebody who actually understands what's going on in these matchups, um, how do you feel this one plays out? Oh, baby. Now I want to look at the classes. Uh, um, uh, Cassie's class is already up. Yeah, you and yeah. me are up. Yeah. Feels good, man. Yeah. So, yeah, Team Rank 5's pattern has been, you know, they're so well-rounded in the middle that that would be where they expect to get the wins. I really wouldn't put it past Cassidy to be able to win. Although I think, I mean, Alex seems to be on a really hot streak here with 6-0 versus uh, season Kappa MVP in Katoda. Um, interesting. Oh, man, you guys and your shamans. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> look at you guys. You're going to be some smart. Players. It was funny. Like, we brought the same lineup both weeks of the playoffs. And, like, I think... Especially in the first week of the playoffs, I think three people brought the lineup Alec and I brought, and we yeah. all won. And and then last week, I think a few more people brought it, and most of us won again. It was really interesting. Yeah, I think I think that one's I think the the one in five I like one might be very favored to win, but I don't know that there'll be like these big three O's that we've been seeing. If there's anything I've noticed about Cassidy in the league in the season, it's that he normally doesn't. If he is losing, he doesn't give up a series very easily. He usually gets those two wins, and those could be huge when the middle of the team of Team Rank 5 is working so hard and just built to be so strong in the middle there. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's going to be very interesting. That's it is going to be interesting. It's so interesting, in fact, that Slim, sh- I agree with everything you just said. <laughs> um, um, tiny fins are... I, I think Jesus is like a tiny fin. He's infinite value. <laughs> Wow. He is with that, especially with the new PR rule that you can't go under 100 anyway. Hey, Zeus is a bargain. Infinite value. Um, My favorite teammate. Cassidy, I, I, how long do flags fly? Forever. And wallets, <laughs> they last a while. <laughs> By the way, for those of you who haven't read my mug yet, I know that the, my fellow casters can't see it, so I'll explain it for him. It's nope. a plain white mug. It simply says on it, best day ever. <laughs> um, and and the Tito's that goes in it, it sh- assures that. I don't know who it was that says, uh, 
Jing wanted to know, how do we know this is tavern talk if no one is drinking? Jing, if you didn't just drink now, you're not playing the game correctly. All right. Sorry. I have to, you know, you guys are talking about THL stuff and actual game stuff, and I'm just trying to make sure everybody's as inebriated as possible going into a Friday. I have Monday off. I just got to survive a half day tomorrow. So good luck to the rest of you. Um, <laughs> so where were we? We were talking about uh, – the championship and, and uh, get in there and what it would mean to everyone. Um, so I, I got to say it. Slimsh, I'll ask you first because these two down here are obviously going to say what they want to say. Uh, yeah. I, we got two biased dudes. You and I are sitting here on the sidelines. Yeah. You got Noob Central, who just absolutely refuses to be denied, versus Team Rank 5, arguably the closest and uh, most balanced team out there right now. Yes. Do you give it to the hot hand, or do you give it to the preparation and unity of Team Rank 5? Oh, man. Well, you know I've been thinking about this. Um, I know... In the playoffs, Team Rank 5, they've been winning their games. Uh, it's been very narrow, though. They needed the tiebreaker to beat Supreme. Came out two points ahead at the Harry Generals. Meanwhile, Noob Central, they've been crushing left and right. Archon Storms, Energy, they're just dominating them. But I do wonder if running into the unique structure that Team Rank 5 has, which you don't see on those other teams... Mm -hmm. um, like Alec, he got he got the big wins versus Clark Kent and Katoda, but and who knows, maybe maybe he's super favored to beat Cassie. Maybe he'll beat him three one. I think that might be a reasonable thing to say, but that the lines are very similar. It so, wasn't a close three one. Yeah. So I think Noob's been running really hot, but running into the structure of team rank five, who they really don't seem to ever give it up. Oh, it's so close. It's so close. <laughs> so it's really it's all really I'm hearing hard. all I'm hearing is I'm scared to make a decision. I just I just I just really don't know. I you know, I'm probably leaning towards team rank five at the end of the day. With flags flying forever, but all right. All right. it's gonna be it's gonna be really, really close. I could, right. I could certainly be wrong. I've been wrong before. So I'm not going to sit here and do the dumb thing and ask Alec who they think is going to win or who he thinks is going to win. <laughs> Instead, what I'm going to say is, Alec, why is Noob Central winning this matchup? Why are we winning the matchup? Oh, the spreadsheets, right? <laughs> um, but, but actually, I, I just think we're playing our best. And we've been consistent the last three weeks. And when we had that going on, that energy, and everyone's been very active in terms of practicing in terms of helping each other out with classes. I just think right now we really care. So when we finally took the time to actually care a little bit, no one's been able to beat us. Wow. wow. <laughs> yeah, right? Bold statement. So, so Cassidy, uh, following that up, why are we voting for you and Team Rank 5? Why is Team Rank 5 winning this matchup? Because we spend more time in our team cave than anybody does. And there's no lying about that, man. We like I was you guys were in Discord. I came on today. I was upset. I was like, what the hell are you doing playing hots? We gotta get in the cave. And there we went. Um I just think we're kinda on a special run right now and we've this has been the goal from the very beginning. Like we like we talked about on Tavern Talk last week. We were never really satisfied with our performance. I don't think ever this season until we beat Supreme, and we've kind of been climbing from there. And we're we're ready. We know we're one game away, and we know that most likely, just given the odds and the results, uh, we probably will never get this close to winning it again, according to the statistics. And so we're not trying to take that for granted. And if you remember, Mage made that awesome video before the season started that about the lion in the jungle. And uh, I've been watching it a lot lately, so I'm um, ready to go. Mage, but... you should totally link that if you, you into the uh, into the chat for those who have not seen it. It is absolutely epic. Um, that got me motivated. I'm not even on your team. <laughs> yeah, it, it was a good one, and and we know that 
flags fly forever. Flags and do fly forever. If we win Inception, I mean, we will just troll THL for like the next year and a half. Oh, so we are so ready. Um, <laughs> we're gonna. Think, we're not gonna okay. let that go. Noob, Noob Central wins. Noob Central wins. Not even close. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> now, hold on. Here's a question I forgot to ask you, Alec. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm thinking of the, the miracle Olympic hockey team here. So you guys limp into the playoffs, and you take down Archon Storm, and you take down Zenergy. If you don't win, what is the level of disappointment? Hmm. That's a really good question. Ooh. I think especially because... It's gonna be really hard to, um, you know, keep the team together, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna be moving on. So, it would suck because the magic that we have now would have been, you know, meant for nothing, right? So I think we have to use what we have right now in this moment because, as you know, this is our only chance too. And this, these five players, this is our only chance to do this together. Mm -hmm. wow. It, it kind of does feel now or never. That's. That's both special and saddening at the same time. So, for so those emotions. for those trying to decide which which side of the fence they're going to be on come uh, Sunday night, keep keep all this in mind. You got the hunger of Team Rank Five and the feeling that now's their time if it's going to happen versus Noob Central, where you're going to see the group disperse and disband after this season. Um, so it, it's kind of like their last hurrah. So that's cool. <laughs> I'm just going to, I don't know how else to say it. Uh, moving on though, moving on. So we have, um, I'm kind of skipping one section here, guys. Uh, we're looking at a team rank Friday. Nothing is currently confirmed, but we do have um, Jesus and uh, why can't I think of names here? Alcohol, silverware, uh, silver wave. wave. Sorry, silverware. silverware. <laughs> Jesus and the Fork are fighting tomorrow, um, as well as in bulk and cutthroat. I do know we are pushing to get every match streamed. Um, I just don't know if anything's confirmed, so I don't want to put them on blast by saying that you have a team rank Friday tomorrow. But there's an opportunity for a team rank Friday. Pay attention to the uh, Facebook thread. We'll let you know times and places you can catch that. We do yeah, know if it's not streamed, you can listen to Mange and I in Discord, like mm -hmm. freaking out as matches are played, because that's what we do. So if you're not in Discord, it's your own damn fault if you don't know what's going on. Uh, we do know, however, uh, because of the Salty Showdown happening on Sunday, we are going to host a Salty, or sorry, on Saturday, we are hosting Salty Sunday this week. Um, we're going to be looking to have Cassidy and Alec. Uh, Murdoch and Loaster, and Mange and Jossaru. Um We're pretty sure it's going to happen in that order as well. Once again, specific times and location, we will let you know on the THL thread on Facebook. Get involved, get in the chat, cheer for the the guys you want to win. I already know who I'm not. I'm cheering for. I'm not saying it here, though, because I'm going <laughs> to be polite to my co-host and guest and not make them feel unwanted or unloved. I just realized, looking at that salty Sunday lineup there, you got the Battle of the Captains going on, huh? Dude, yeah. dude there's so yeah. many there's so many levels to this matchup that are really cool. Um, you know, you, you have Cassie and Alec here tonight. You have Mange and Jossaru going at it. Uh, you have a perfectly even matchup between Inbulk and Cutthroat. You have what should be a completely lopsided matchup in Jesus and Silver Wave, but it doesn't feel that way because of Jesus's recent, like there's a lot of just really cool things going on with this mm -hmm. matchup that I'm excited for. Um, and Murdoch and um, Loaster both just fly under the radar so hard. Like they're oh, both yeah. so good and they both never get talked about. And now they get to see who is more underrated than the other. Um, I would say, I would say that part of the problem with, of, with us not talking about Captain Murdoch is he's not on hots with us enough. <laughs> <laughs> he's on discord a fair amount though. Oh yeah. Yeah. Definitely a solid dude, too. Um, but moving on past things from uh, the world of the finals, which it's kind of hard to do as we are so excited about it. But I want to give a huge shout out to uh, to Mange for putting on our first ever Wicked Wednesday last night, which we've tried tournaments in this league before that um, 
I mean, I think we had like seven or like nine people involved. And I forgot the exact number I wrote down, but I do know it was pl- a 20 plus people. I think um, like 26, 28 maybe checked in. Yeah, it was Probably. it was it was definitely above 25. Um, mm-hmm. And it was a blast, man. Uh, some matchups that you wanted to I got to match up against Twiz in, in a format that actually mattered if I won or lost, which was cool. Um, yeah. I know that there's a few other people that typically would not play each other uh, that got to face off, such as Brunson and, and Mr. Slimsh. <laughs> um, that was a fun one to watch. We had the upset of, uh, well, I can't think of it right now. It, who who took down Andy Rogers that we're all like, what? Uh, oh, uh, no. sh- you know, Rad Dreams, right? No, no he beat Rad- Katoda. Rad Dreams beat Katoda. Oh, was it Katoda that, you know what I mean? It was just it That's was crazy. the upset you were thinking about. It was a 3-0. Yeah, so there was just some there was some nuts stuff that happened, and it was mm-hmm. uh, it was a lot of fun to be a part of. And um, Mange himself will tell you he learned a lot from the experience, and he's got plans for improvement for next week. Which I mean, if you're improving upon what was already a great time, fucking sign me up, I'm in. Uh, so be on the lookout. That'll be on the Facebook thread, um, for next week's Wicked Wednesday, and you know. We, I guess we got to talk about the finals of it, right? I know that not many stayed up after their their defeats there, but uh, Dear Jason took on our very own Slimsh. Uh, I believe there's still Slimsh. Was it a three two? Yeah, it was the three two. Dear Jason got me. Um, I did not catch the exact cast of it, but I was in the Discord as people were kind of giving me the live updates. How was that playing, uh, Dear Jason? Is that the first time you've ever matched up against him? Yes, yes. When we when we went up against Team Supreme within the season, I went up against MV Parker at the time, who was the one seed, who now he and Dear Jason have swapped, I believe. So, yeah, yeah, it was interesting. Uh, you queue into Dear Jason, he's currently, like, like MV Parker was when I queued up against him in the regular season, just sitting at, like, a casual, I don't know, in the teens somewhere of legend. Just no big deal. Here, I'm, here I am with my little molten giant hanging out. <laughs> feeling feeling completely inferior going into this Hearthstone game. Um, uh, and, and how that that three two result? Who's that in favor of Slimsh? Is in favor of Dear Jason. Uh, How's it feel to lose again in competitive uh, THL play? Because it's been a while for you. Bad, but I, <laughs> I see you smirking, to... Alec. Alec liked that comment. <laughs> I mean, I saw I saw it coming a mile away. I built my entire lineup to just screw Druids because you know that's how I was feeling that day. I decided that if my opponent was going to bring Malfurion, then they weren't going to win the series against me. Well, dear Jason did not have Malfurion. He had uh, <laughs> some other things up his sleeve. So I was pretty unfavored from the start. I got a really lucky win in one of the games with my uh, <laughs> with my mech shaman that I threw together. I got a pretty lucky crackle. <laughs> dear Jason wasn't too happy about that. But overall, he I think he had me um, from the get-go, the way uh- things went. Quick so, announcement about uh, Wicked Wednesday. Next week, we're going to be moving to Strivewire, thank God, because Challenge is nice. awful. And we have received word that if enough people sign up, there will be actually a 5 euro, a lot of money, a 5 Whoa. euro cash prize to the winner. So you can buy Chipotle the next day. Feel really good about yourself. What? Oh, we need a ton of participation but, for that to happen. But can you Victory get Glock? Burrito. Um, I, I also heard... No. I also heard through uh, the grapevine, a little birdie told me that um, if you reach – now, don't get me wrong. This number's a little high, but I think with our community and the fact that we have this many players in the league, um, if you get X amount of players – I don't want to name it because I just want everybody to sign the fuck up and do it because it's a good time. We could actually petition to try to get this to be an official event. Um you mean like BlizzCon points or what? BlizzCon points. BlizzCon points, oh, yep. Oh, baby. Now, it's a whole process to go through, and we have to have evidence that this is a, uh official event. It's well-planned. It's a lot of work, but I actually went through and read the, the bylaws that would make that happen. Uh, it's very doable within our numbers, uh, but it also has to be something we could do consistently. So mm. um, I don't know about you guys. Uh, I don't ever plan on sitting at a BlizzCon seat but I know there are quite a few people with that level of talent within our league. Yeah. So if that's something you're interested in, uh, grab your friends, grab your kids, grab your wife, 
Don't hide them. Bring them on out. Sign up uh, for next week's Wicked Wednesday on Strivewire. Uh, Mange and, and Cassie and those guys will help us figure out the details on that. Yeah, it's so, going to be so good. If if you've never played an online tournament on Strivewire before, it's so much better than Challenge. There's oh an interface. Yeah. There's an interface where like you submit your classes into it match by match. They come up. You can put a ban in through there. There's there's a text box to chat with your opponent. Mm -hmm. um, there's there's spaces to talk with admins too. It's just it's going to it's be awesome. Good. It's almost as awesome as Super Sam is, and in letting us know information about things uh, that go on in the Hearthstone world, as well as he's so awesome that he even had a deck list featured on Tempo Storm, although they didn't credit him. Never credited. Never credited. Right. Um, so just want to give a shout out to to Super Sam who sometimes gets credited by the host of Tavern Talk. All right, move down the line, because we got a lot to get through still. Uh, where were we? Team Rank Friday, we talked about. Wicked Wednesday recap, we talked about. Mm. Um, so we, have, we have some... Uh, we're right there, fellas. We have some off-season announcements to make, um, as we have for the past few weeks, and we will continue to have as we move further into the off-season. Uh, I don't know, Slim. Why don't, why don't you kick it off and let the crowd know what's happening in the off season? Sure. So I'll start um, speaking for myself. Is what you're going for there? I guess. Mm-hmm. So, um, I've I've been expressing interest in becoming a captain and taking a team for a good while now. I've only recently committed hard to it. It's kind of wishy washy before. So. Um, Jing Buddha has, in his very busy time, expressed interest in stepping down as a captain. He will remain as a player, and he will be on the Ghost of Casuals. I am going to pick up the baton and be the captain. Well, I have been for a while now for the Ghost of Casuals. Um, our roster is filled out. We have myself, Jing Buddha, Adam, Michael is coming back, and we have drafted a new five seed. Um, oh, and you may have seen him on the Facebook page about a week nice. or so ago. He was uh, he was shooting out some dank memes. Shooting out the dank. Now, just just for the folks playing along at home, what specifically did Owen do that made you want to talk to him, or that made him a uh, appealing candidate for you guys over at Gosu? Uh, well, you know, I was we were kind of constricted on the PR. So I contacted a few players who fit in. There weren't many of them, but once I got to start interacting with Owen, he seemed, you know, just really um, appreciative of the, uh, of being considered. I think he reminded me a lot about me when I was a free agent looking to get picked up by a team. Um, I don't know. He he seems just so willing to learn. He seems like a sponge, really. His he hasn't been playing Hearthstone too long. His collection's not perfect, but I think it's doable. I think he's got a lot of drive in him to become a better player, and really, that's all I can ask for in looking to sign people. I'm really excited about Owen. Nice man. We're glad to have you amongst the ranks of captain. Um, oh baby. DHL always loves uh, captains with infinite value. You you are the wisp of captains. Well, but you're not well, golden because well, he's well, already got a team he's making. Uh, yeah, because yeah, spoiler alert. You know, Cassie, I was trying to segue into that, but seeing as you want to drop spoilers with you are, no, I did it for you. <sighs> um, the only thing more valuable than a, than a wisp is a golden wisp. Um, so Alec, you're you're stepping up and uh, taking the reins of a squad this season. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, so it's, I'm going to be bringing in some outside talent, uh, so it's going to be quite interesting. And Hunter's going to be joining, so we're it's we're kind of top heavy. But I found some guys that have like really great collections, but just don't get to like you know lower ranks. So I have a good four and five, but still looking for a three. So we'll cool. kind of figure that out one. But I think we've got four people so far, so I'm liking it. Do you know what kind of PR you have left to work with? Because we got some free agents in chat. Oh, here. it actually depends if I beat you this weekend. <laughs> oh man, I forgot about that. Yeah, that's yeah. that's kind of yep. important. PRs are still being figured out. You know, that's okay. That's one of the punishments of being good. <laughs> yeah, so it's like yeah, it's actually a pretty big difference in terms of like someone that could hit rank 
seven or someone that hits rank five, right? So. Right. Because, I mean, you're you're flirting with that, that 500 level status over there, uh, Alec. But, you know, what? let's let's make the guesstimate here. You, you beat Cassie, you're probably sitting about, what, 490? Mm-hmm. So. It's like 486 at this point, right? And then bringing in a legend player, too. So yeah, it'd be like four ninety three. Yeah. Oh yeah. Ooh. So be like one win off the exclusive five hundred club. If you had to give a rough range, just because I know I'm looking in the chat here, I see mm-hmm. that we have a few um, free agents here with us uh, this evening. What's a rough estimate of a, a fifty points give or take area? Uh, it's around like three ninety. Oh, so you got wow. plenty to work with, man. Plenty, oh, wow. plenty to work with there. So if if that sounds like where you live, um, get our boy Alec. Find out what he's looking for, what you could do to get yourself on his radar. But of course, wait until after this weekend because he's got some uh, light like trash to take out over there. I mean, you could bring like some face warrior if you really want extra PR points to spend on free agents. <laughs> and, uh, I won't you know, say a word. I promise. You know my classes. I'm not bringing warrior. So um, oh, yeah, well, it was a glitch in the system. You, you have warrior. It's fine. Just email Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> so those are some exciting new captain announcements. Um, amongst a few other new captains that we've got confirmation of and have been approved through the process, uh, who you free agents can also get at, we would like to welcome um, to the ranks. Actually, first we'd like to re- welcome a returning uh, leader in the league, and Mr. Uh, Nade, who um, – is coming back, uh, founder of a team, coming back to lead it. Uh, welcome back, sir. As well as um, Mr. D. Lyman in the Boom Squad. Um, With Brunson team. on board. Yeah, they <laughs> Brunson are the Dankest on board. The Dank- they don't measure their team in PR. They measure their team in DR. We, yeah, we were talking the other day. There should be, there should be a Dank rating for players. They would definitely be breaking one. that DR. Down. Yeah, DR. <laughs> DR and PR. Uh, we have Mr. Tell coming from Top Deck uh, Kings, who, if you guys did not check it out yet, I know it's been posted a few times, but they uh, had our very own Jedi on their show um, last week. was actually a, a really great show, um, really, really good time. I listened to the whole thing, which I usually zone in and out uh, because I'm ADD like that. That was a great show to listen to, so check him out. I believe he's bringing in a full team already or most of a team. you guys know the details on that? Uh, I think they do. Yeah, I think uh, they're bringing in like three or four people. Yeah. So yeah, I heard on their podcast they were talking about they had the couple of them were legend players. They had a few guys who um just kind of hit rank four or so regularly. Mm -hmm. I think they might need to round out with one more pickup. Yeah, because their their podcast isn't the level of dedication that like Alex is. So they have people on their team that do like podcasts that are like rank six, rank four. Yeah. So they they kind of already are a team. It's interesting. Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm excited to have them on board. Uh, so I would if I were you guys, I would check in with him. He's active on the Facebook page. Uh, you could just probably give him a shout out on there to find out if he needs anybody or not. Um, the one and only Super Sam, man. Yep. That's gonna be interesting as hell because I know just from talking with him a little bit or or being in the Discord as he's talking about it. Um. Sounding like a very solid squad already. And you know if he's bringing in people he plays with on the regular, we know the caliber of player he associates himself with. So, um, should, yeah. should be a pretty stacked team on that side. Just just a little bit earlier today, Super Sam was mentioning that he'd be collaborating on a VLPS stream, something like that. He, he's got so many connections. He knows VLPS the- and THL confirmed. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't think I could survive the excitement. Give, give that man a 600 PR. <laughs> we, need to, we need to break it. Yeah, right. Let's let's raise the uh, ceiling for him. Yeah. Um, and then last but not least uh, of the new captains that I am super pumped about uh, because I know that for a while um, it was it was kind of iffy with him as to whether or not he was going to do it. But Entropy's former one spot, Al Mace, is, is breaking free. Um and setting up his own squad, and I'm really hoping he could bring uh, Mr. Mark Shire back into the league with him. Uh, two great guys that 
I'm really glad to hear are going to be sticking around and, and actually uh, elevating their role within the THL. So uh, I know Al Mace hasn't really set anything in stone. He's keeping his options open. He's talking to lots of people. Uh, for you lower PR players that fit in like the four or five uh, seed, a lot of the growth I've gotten over the past two months has come at the hands of that man. So definitely if you're the player looking for uh, knowledge and to improve, a uh, great captain for you over there. Um, not that any of these other guys are not. I just could speak as a former teammate of his, uh, of what I know he's about. He pretty much ran our practices, him and uh, Mark Shire. Growth at the hands of that man. Yeah, you know, Slim. <laughs> well, Slim, do you want me to tell the folks at home who I give the, the other half of my growth credit to? Yeah. Look yeah, at that beard. I, Fucking I, beard. Niagara. That, that, <laughs> beard, that beard is infinite value, man. Oh, thank you. Infinite value. No, we got all kinds of people helping you out. <laughs> yeah, dude, we, we did a little climbing today. And uh, if the Tito's doesn't say otherwise, there might be some climbing when we're done with this. Um, and then, you know, this is not really a captain's announcement, but something I'm really happy about. Uh, and for those who were in the league during Alpha and Beta, um, Entropy has filled out our lineup for next season. Uh, it's one of the few player announcements I'm going to make tonight just because he was already in the Discord and announced it. But uh, Entropy's co-founder and one of the original members, uh, our former one seat, uh, Zather, is returning back to the league next season. And I'm really pumped to have him back. He's somebody I know in real life. And uh, we got – he's uh, – listen, Brunson, uh, Cassidy, Mange, uh, Killajot – he, I can't get him off a league onto hot, so I need you guys' help with that. We gotta convert him. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we also have. Are we allowed to? Because I didn't get it approved in the notes, but I'm pretty sure we voted on it already. Are Are we allowed to announce the division stuff yet? Or do we gotta we wait? Totally for? should bring that up. Yeah, we should yeah. just touch on it. So sure, just a little bit, just a tease. I'm I've talked enough, that. and I need to refill my cup, so I will pass the baton to either Cassie or Slimsh. And Alec, when they're done, I want to know what you think about the proposed new format. So oh, I, right, I, take I'd notes. Go with, I'd go with Cassidy. He he was pretty much the one, along with Mange, who, uh, who put it out there to begin with. So. All right. So, Cassie, let's hear all it. Right. So, we, with all the new captains, you guys are like, oh, my God, how many teams are we going to have? We are going to have 16 teams up from the 12 we had this season. And 16 is a wonderful number. It's, if you're a math person, it's a perfect square. And so we are going to divide the THL up into four divisions with four teams in each division. And the thinking behind this is that outside of Turf Wars, you don't interact with the other half of the league like ever. And even when you have your own conference, you are only interacting with each team once. And we, we kind of thought, okay, like we're trying to spread the wealth a lot and we're trying to like meet all these new people, but we're not meeting half and the half we are meeting, we're not really interacting with that much. And so we're going more towards like the, the NFL route and the way they do things in football. And so we're going to divide everybody into four divisions and each season you will play everybody in your division no matter what. And so the thinking there is that season two, season three, season four, you're going to develop these rivalries where you're like, man, I fucking hate Super Sam. I lost to him two seasons in a row. I just want to murder him. And But at the same time, because you can't have a three-week season, obviously, your division will all compete against another division. So if there's four divisions, we'll say like one and two, every team will play each other. And then like three and four, every team would play each other. And that gives you the idea of, okay, we all hate each other in our division, but we want to beat that division, and we get to meet these new people from that area of the league this season. And then next season, we won't play them, and we'll play somebody else. But we maintain that rivalry. Like, Jack Sox complains about Archon Storm all the time. You already know the board's going to make sure Archon Storm and Entropy are in the same division because it's just so entertaining to listen to him complain. Right. And uh, <laughs> so that's the idea. And we're hoping that it fosters a more kind of competitive mindset and then with free agency and PRs and all that, like the way teams build themselves, they're going to be building themselves to beat teams in their division, which is going to create a whole new meta game. I don't know. I'm just super excited about this. So new meta. So that's about it. So to, to also kind of just put uh, terms on there that helped me understand it. It's kind of like AFC, NFC, East, West, 
Okay. You know, so you have your – you're in AFC East. You're playing AFC West. Same thing on the other side. You guys are beating the shit out of each other, and then eventually you beat the shit out of the other side too. So, Alec, what do you think about this as compared to the format that you got to experience this season? It was definitely fun. Um, you know, I'm a huge sports guy, so it's obviously fun getting some division rivalries in there. Uh, one question, how many teams make the playoffs? Uh, exactly half. So uh, two out of the four teams, like the top two in each division will go in. All right, cool. Yeah, I mean, that's great when you're competing within your division for the playoffs, too. Mm-hmm. That, you know, it's pretty awesome. And I think winning the division, obviously, if that gets you to the playoffs, that's, that would just feel great. And, and a division win is technically another flag, and flags do fly forever. Flags so. fly fucking all the damn time. Mm. Yes, Mr. Gideon Echo, I can't wait to teach you a lesson about why you should not sign with Archon Storm. Oh, yeah. All you have Punish to do is him. wait a couple more hours. Uh-oh. All you have to do is wait a couple more hours. Yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm getting a little uh, getting a little rowdy. The Tito's is uh, bringing out my Latin oh, side. The, the free agency show is going to be so fun. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, by the way, um, we are intentionally being vague on a lot of the uh, player announcements as we are going to have an official kind of like a draft day type cast um, happening here on Tavern Talk in the off season. Um, but another thing that's happening on Tavern Talk in the off season. Uh, you know, so this weekend we're going to beat the living crap out of vicious syndicate because they don't have, Ooh. they don't have anybody on their, their side. That's like, you know, pushing top 10 legend or anything like that. <laughs> um, and THL too strong. And we're going to show up and rally and support our guys on Saturday. Uh, but outside of beating the crap out of vicious syndicate, we also have a showdown with the boys over at uh golden wisp. Um, we had not locked it in, but we do know one of the Tavern Talk shows will be replaced by this this throwdown. Um, Alec, what what can we expect from you guys? I mean, if you put me and Hunter together, that's pretty scary, especially because we both play super differently. He's like the brain, and I'm like the instincts. So <laughs> that like dual headed dragon coming at you, I don't know. So we did a. Uh... Over on our side, we decided that we'd pick one of the three of us to, to throw down this. Um, I still haven't decided whether the Bearded Beauty... Oh, it's him. All right, so oh, Cassie is just bowing right, out. I can, I can see. Right. I've got so, a finals matchup to worry about. Well, we, I can see. I've got a flag that needs to fly. We're sending We're sending the animal forever? that is the Bearded Beauty. The flags have to fly forever, just like wallets do. Oh, I wish I had my wallet. Um, I would show you how worn out it's getting. But the other piece we have is uh, we had a Patreon drive, which uh, thank you guys once again for those who participated in it. And then we had our very own Lemur who uh, won our auto deck complete uh, autofill deck contest we had here on a Salty Saturday Meets Tavern Talk episode. And out of those names, I I drew one. Um and should he choose uh, – he, I haven't contacted him yet. He's actually probably learning for the first time right now that his name was the winning number. So should he chat, choose right? to pick up the mantle, Mr. Ham Bowen yes. will be the, the second representative coming from the THL in the THL Golden Wisp throwdown. Just like Derek Zoolander and Mr. Magatu, he's so hot right now. So hot right now. But we'll let you guys know exactly what the date is on that. Um, just know that it will be during Tavern Talk time. So we have to also show up and make all these Golden Wisp people know that we're loud and obnoxious and support our own here at the THL. That's going to be a fun Twitch chat. Oh, Let God, I you. can't wait. You I can't wait either. It's going to be so much better than ours. <laughs> like... <laughs> uh, oh, Hambone is there. So get yourself ready, Hambone. Um, you got to – I mean – I don't know who's beating Alec. Uh, hopefully, hopefully one of the two of you can. Uh, Slim's already did it, so. Yeah, yeah, but he yeah, did that. But... He did that prior to this swag you've got going yeah, on. Yeah, I think now, you man. guys unleashed yourself. You still playing the Murloc Paladin? Hell no. <laughs> you were one damage I, I off Murloc... lethal. Oh, I played Murloc Paladin against like the week it came out against him. It was one off lethal. Of, like was trying to be like you know a little showy, and then he just yep. wrecked me. Got him. Uh, 
So realizing, by the way, that uh, I, I set up our, our script here awfully and realizing that alcohol makes me unable to run a show. <laughs> um, sorry, I, I'm on a mission to kill this Tito's tonight, and I'm almost there. Um, I skipped over or poorly set up uh, a couple other announcements that we did want to make tonight uh, because they are public knowledge to a few people already. And I know that Jedi made a post about this, and Eric, they're pumped about it. Um, the Harry Generals did lock down, uh, in my opinion, one of the not only the best people, but the best upcoming players in the league, in Mr. Gern Blanston. Glad to see uh, my former entropy brother find a home on a good team with a good group of dudes. And they also grabbed a newcomer, um, Poke Her. Yeah, Jedi, Jedi was telling me about Poker. He shared a link where um, Poker is a player who finished in top 100 legend in the December season, oh I believe. Or no, November, November. This is not one that counted for points, but Damn. still, like, yeah. you got to give credit. So now, for those of you who look at the Harry Generals roster, and you're kind of like, wait a minute, they have seven guys on their team. What the hell is up with that? Um, we actually have Jedi and Necro, or, or Richard and Eric as we know them, um, are going to be take. They're still going to be involved with the Harry Generals. Uh, Richard's still going to be at the helm, but he's going to take on a non-player role. Uh, so that he, with all the growth and everything that's been happening behind the scenes lately, uh, for those who don't get to see the daily email threads and, and all the work that does happen behind the scenes to make uh, this group we're a part of so awesome, it takes a lot of work, especially when you have a, another uh, infant on the way. Um, so they're going to take a, a backseat to playing to make sure that both their team and this league continue to grow and run properly. So... Um, be looking for a new face of the Harry Generals next season. And coming off of the success they had this season, um, I can't imagine it being anything less than a stellar stellar February for them. All right, did I catch everything in there? Um, I just wanted to throw out that uh, Kill a Jive, on top of being a dank memer, is the best value-free agent remaining. Captains, go talk to that guy. Well, you know what? If you can put up with him being criminal scum... Uh, <laughs> You should probably probably I, get him on your team. That's he's a value actually, pickup. He's almost infinite value. He is. He's like infinite value. Infinite value. So there's someone out there um, that I probably won't be able to pick up because of PR. I think my PR, it's probably actually like 350 that I have left. But his name is Dadges, D-A-J-Z. He is a beast. So if you guys, I went to college with him. He's amazing. And okay. he's only like 390, I think. So is he? Is, sorry, is he on the thread? I didn't hear that part. I was drinking. No, alcohol. he he's in the free agent pool somewhere. He signed up. So if you guys can reach out to him, he's really good. Captains, I don't have him on the spreadsheet yet. So write that down now. I'll get him on the spreadsheet though. Um, by the way, Killa, I want to let you know that the other day I was trying to reach out to you before Zaither let me know. Um, so both you and Gideon Echo fucked up on not being on the winning team next season. All right. So, um, did I miss anything there, guys? Right? I, I got that all. I'm doing uh, it salt. Oh, wait. You're you're just about to get to it, right? The the, salt, the other salty? Yeah. Well, I mentioned it. it I mentioned that we're going to whoop the crap out of those vicious syndicate syndicate individuals. That's all we need to know is that THL will reign supreme. But we Saturday all... at, what, 9 Eastern? Yeah, so in, in place of our uh, Salty Saturday stream for THL, it'll be a Salty Showdown stream. Um, so... Same bat time, same bat channel, uh, just different victims. So, um, I scheduled finals around it, so you guys better tune in. Yeah, oh, uh, we moved a lot of stuff around. Also, um, every opportunity we get to show what this community is, because that's what makes us great. We talk about it all the time on the show. Um, this community is what makes being a part of this community so fun. It's not the game that does it. Hearthstone's a great game, but it's it's playing Hearthstone with these people and interacting with these people. That makes the THL what it is. So let's show up in force. And if anybody from Vicious Syndicate has the balls to step into our Twitch chat, let's be kind, but let's let them know that, you know, THL is where they're in. Yep. <laughs> um, but in all honesty, though, I, I'm looking directly at you, Brunson, D Lyman. My eyes are on Brunson's blue name and D Lyman's orange name. 
they are our boys. We just want to beat the crap out of them. Yes. All right. <laughs> so, um, dial down the fuck boy from like a, a 25 to at least a 10. All right. 24. <laughs> or Rito. <laughs> Rito. Rito. So, yeah, but for the salty showdown, rest assured that uh, me and uh, my fellow teammates for, in this Archon um, ATLC format, which is a lot of fun. It's gonna the series are they're very long. They're very exciting. We're we're planning furiously in email threads right now to make sure everything's perfect. So I'm really looking forward to it. It's they will be bringing one. aggro shaman because I mean I that's saw. what demigod plays. That's what Ray plays. So expect that for sure. Nice. Yes, so. we are we are on it. <laughs> they um. will be punished. Ray just wrote an article too about winning in tournaments and his mm -hmm. lineup in those. Yep. So you should got that. Play. All right, good. Slim's <laughs> <laughs> putting in the homework, man. It was shared with me. <laughs> D Lyman's already going off in chat. Love it. We have many eyes. In the <laughs> oh, Come at me, demigod. Bunch of fuck boys. Bunch of fuck boys. All right, so let let's get down to the the Q and A section here. Yes. I love I love how quality we've we've had a couple of really good Q and A's the past couple weeks. Um, and actually, you guys Let's didn't pull crunk. one of my favorite questions, um, so I gotta go back and find that one so I can ask right. it. Uh, but oh, in sorry. the meantime, in the meantime, let's get a uh, let's get rolling with a question from uh, the one and only Mr. Vendy Click of Teams Energy. Uh, reeling off upsets and losses, how do you believe Archon Storm? the Gosu Casuals and Xenergy will return and perform next season. How will the teams performing the upset likely come back? Uh, will there potentially be a power shift from traditional Titans of THL to the new wave of fresh, fierce faces such as Supreme or teams that have been around for a while but are just now finding big success like Noob Central and uh, Season 1 Vets, the Angry Chicken Fan Club? So many questions in this one. Um, There's let, a lot. Yeah. yeah so Cheating. let's let's start at the beginning here. Yeah. Uh, how do we see Archon Storm, the Ghost of Casuals, and Xenergy coming back and performing next season? I'll let whoever wants to grab this one grab it. Okay, uh, I'll grab it. Um, sure. Archon Storm, 73 points. Xenergy, 36 points. And the Ghost of Casuals, 50 points. So they're all going to take a step down in terms of PR. Mm -hmm. because of the new cap and i think that will affect them a little bit maybe not a ton because those are teams that not only are they loaded with good players they're loaded with a lot of continuity and they're gonna have to sacrifice that in wave of the pr changes and we'll see how their their culture and their roster kind of lines up because we all agree in thl that like good players are good but really good, tightly knit teams find ways to like win matches they shouldn't win or squeak out wins they should win. They're really good in that preparation phase. And all three of those teams are going to be, I don't want to say eviscerated, but they're going to be backstabbed, you know, zero, zero <laughs> mana, two damage in terms of what they can do with their roster. So I'm really intrigued to see what happens there. You made Brunson so happy. <laughs> <laughs> talk about rogue cards. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll talk about. This one too, since the Gosu Casuals in there, uh, we heard we heard some whispers from uh, Archon Storm that uh, that this this next season for them might be kind of casual, apparently. But I think this is just like the setup for um, like this is the deceit in their captain to uh, to try and plant that one on us. So I expect them to continue. They're taking a huge hit. It'll be interesting to see how. Uh, their captain responds to that because that's pretty challenging, honestly. Uh, go to casuals, um, with with everyone that we have here, and I guess me being the official captain. Although really, I think the team's going to operate very much the same because I've always been active within it. I really don't see any sign of us slowing down, um, despite some of these new fresh faces. I think we've we've been able to go toe to toe with them quite well no matter what the case is so we're not too concerned there and Xenergy I mean they've they've proven themselves to be just extremely consistent always making it to the playoffs they make a good run of it um, Katoda one of the better players in the league always doing extremely well he keeps he keeps finishing with winning records I believe I don't think his PR is ever not going to be 500 so 
Um, it's definitely gonna be interesting. Like some of the some of the new trends that we saw from this season, I don't suspect will go away too much. Although in the cases of like the Angry Chicken fan club, Super Sam's making his own team. Interesting to see what's gonna happen there. Just looking at Vendy Vendy Click's question, um, Supreme. I don't know how much they're gonna shift. I know they've gotta make a cut somewhere, and Noob Central uh, Alec is splitting off. So yeah, it'd be interesting. I yeah. think though with Josh, uh, Josh, like yeah. you're just you're gonna do fine. Honestly, he can get in any uh, amount of players and just shape that team so well mm-hmm. with like the research that they're doing behind the scenes. I think New Central's still gonna be fine even if the band has to break up. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, we uh, it's true. We kind of broke up last season, and they bounce back even better this season. So Bible thump. if there's a track record of putting the other teams that just win, it's definitely with noob central. Yeah. yeah they... you, you definitely see it. I think this is, is a testament to uh, the behind the, the behind the scenes work that Alec was just uh, alluding to, you know, last season we were shocked this season, we were shocked at the late season success, but you know, when you build a team with the intentions of improving and growing as, as uh, the season progresses, you know, and you do it time and time again. It's kind of mm-hmm. like the Patriots, you know. You you look at the Patriots outside of Tom Brady, who's the star on that team. It doesn't really matter. They'll just keep finding the talent to fill it in there. You know, I hate the Patriots, by the way. So, <laughs> any of you Patriot fans, you're just fuckboys. Um, yeah, but it's very true. And also, I look over at the Angry Chicken fan club, right? Yeah, that team, I mean, they're gone. Yeah. Uh, Killer Jive's a free agent. Sam's starting his own team. Rip. So, so they they are going to go their separate ways, is what it looks like. They're going to pull in one direction. They're going to take a hiatus and then just you know, Harry Styles is going to start his own thing. Sorry guys, you're all fucked. Uh, that was um, reached. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I I would like to comment on this by saying that I think what we're actually seeing, um, and what we'll see next year, is the PR system doing what the PR system does in this league. Uh, we as Cassie highlighted. All those teams that are in the first half of that question, Archon Storm, the Gosu Casual, Xenergy, they have to make cuts. Um, you know, success comes at a price. And you'll see a lot of these teams that were under the cap but improved, which this league tends to make players better players. Uh, they'll continue to grow and, and perform. Um, and we'll probably see those teams that showed late season success, such as, you know, uh, the Noob Centrals of the world. Um, the Harry Generals, teams like that, will probably kind of rise to the top at the start of next season. Um, do I think Xenergy, Archon Storm, or the Gosu Casuals are going to be write-offs? Hell no. But I do think we will see somebody new rise to the top. Uh, who that is, I don't know. But... You know who doesn't have to make any cuts? You <laughs> guys. Hi. Unless yeah. we five zero, then we would have to make cuts. <laughs> we don't want, we're not going to five zero though, so don't worry. Yeah, you team rank five. Is that... Actually, pretty interesting. I want to make a small point. I was just looking at the math of like the PR cap and everything. And if you have a player on your team who's 500, which would be a new legend player or one of the existing 500 or anyone who's in that range of very high, like those players, they take, they take more than their fair share of your total PR. They take over a quarter of it in most cases. So, yeah, like these, these other teams who are coming up. I think Noob Central's very well-rounded, especially at the five seed. Team rank five. The Angry Chicken fan club was even like that uh, for a good while. So it it's definitely going to be interesting. There seems to be some kind of shifts in uh, team dynamics here. But we'll have to see. It. Team rank five can prove it all if they want this weekend. And, and one last point to bring up. I just want to make sure that's not addressed in a different question that we're going to get to. I don't think so. Um, you know, there, there, there's another little thing that's happening behind the scenes as I've talked to a few captains. I will not lie. Entropy ourselves are doing it this season. Um, the one and done mentality of, you know, we've pushed the cap this season to the point that if we are successful in the way we hope to be, we've built a team this preseason that we know will not be able to stay together next season. I know that we're not the only team taking this approach, but, you know, um, infinite value is a great thing, and everything Cassidy and Slim says is fucking amazing. And, uh, Cassidy, how long do flags fly? Or ever. So if we 5-0, we'll gladly part ways, and we'll take our wallets with us. 
So, you know, that's just one more thing to keep in mind. I'm not going to put other captains on blast, but you know who you are. Uh, we're, we're going with the Yankees strategy of, you know, we're not looking to grow. We're looking to win. So, here's to that. Uh, next question up on the, the docket here. With the league growing, there are uh, there may be more need for THL worker bees. Uh, are there any roles that general members can step up uh, that – in the, the, the let me try to read step up that the league are not <laughs> in other words is there shit y'all can do whether yes. <laughs> whether you're new to the league or veteran to the league um such as casting blogging marketing etc this is coming from mr nade uh absolutely 100 percent um this show right here is an example of that um i messaged jedi one day i was like jedi I want to start a talk show about the THL. Um, a week later, we had the very first episode of Tavern Talk. Uh, Jeff Geyer from the Facebook page there, I I want to help with the blog. He now runs the blog. Um, Eric does awesome work with ads. Um, Brunson is our resident memer. Um, you know, absolutely. It's just a matter of taking the initiative because nobody's going to hold your hand through that process. You know, we, we fucked up plenty here at Tavern Talk. Trust me. It took a lot of, uh, a lot of learning and a lot of drinking, um, to figure out how to do it. But yeah, can you guys think of any rules off the top of your heads that we've talked about that we need? Um, we always need more people capable of streaming games. Mm -hmm. We, we learned that the hard way this season. Um, yeah. I, I would think, and I don't run the blog, so I can't say this for sure, but I would think the more blog posts, the merrier, yes. as long as they're like quality. I'm, I'm prepping an awesome blog post that I'm going to drop this off season. It's going to be like a novel, so uh, stay tuned for that. But yep. uh, Will Gern Blanston, he dropped the awesome uh, Gaming as a Dad post. That was pretty sweet. Um, Jedi says we need lawyers. Um, I think he's serious. Yeah, actually. When I, when I was involved with like, college dodgeball league long story um we had lawyers that did stuff so yeah i think i think we could definitely use some lawyers if there's any of you out there well we're growing to the point man where we gotta we gotta kind of make sure that we're doing the right things and protecting uh this awesome community we've created here mm -hmm. so i i would get the jedi if, if you have a uh, legal experience if you're a lawyer um get at them um which kind of also brings me to the question i want to look up that um was asked that we didn't grab here. Uh, it, it came from the one and only Grim, who um, I know. Grim gamer. The the Grim gamer, who I know Winning took man. who I know took a shot at uh, casting the Wicked Wednesday finals. I know he's been doing his own little streaming, and he frequently asks questions referring to casting. Um, and his question goes a little something like this: How did you feel the first time casting matches? Uh, does it get more comfortable as you go? Um, it's a learning experience, man. Like, for the longest time, uh, I wanted to stream. But I didn't know what to say. Didn't know what to do. Uh, Slimch is new to the casting thing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, all of us in our own time. Alec, do you have your own stream going? or? Well, I, I actually cast for Vicious Syndicate this season. So... But it's tough, man. You just got to keep yeah. at it. You have to keep at it. It definitely gets better as you go. And you, you have all... good nights and bad nights. You learn you... that pretty quick. You'll also <laughs> learn your style, man. Um, I like mm -hmm. to think of Slimch as the, the wise educator. Like He'll bust some jokes with you and all that, but you, typically his stream tends to be a little more on the serious side, uh, where you can learn just as much from going to Cassie's stream, especially when he was doing like the how-to mid-range paladin couple weeks he did there yeah i should go back to that um now i just play emo music and complain his, his style is a little more uh kidding around and and like you know you're definitely gonna have laughs over on cassidy's side um you'll probably learn about friday girl or friday chick if you don't know about still friday. what still taking applications so and then you know you could be on a stage like alec where you're you're doing it for an organization i mean i guess technically we're casting for an organization right now but Mm -hmm. it's so grassroots it kind of feels natural to do what we're doing right now alec do you ever feel pressure to perform doing the uh vicious syndicate piece oh hell yeah i mean you know it's tough like people are actually watching like i think 
last night I was casting with Cora, actually, who you guys are going to be playing against. Yep. And we both missed a lethal. Uh, but then <laughs> we look back on it. You just have to laugh about it. You shake it off. You're like, all right, next time we're going to spot that. It was fucking rogue. I don't play fucking rogue. Rank so. 25 casters. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Yeah, so and yeah. you'll also find this, man. There's certain people you're comfortable with, too. You know, like, yeah. <clears throat> it, I know if I've got either Slimsh or Cassidy with me, I could throw any third party into it, and I'll be fine, because I have the rapport with those guys already. Um, so it, it comes with... If you with... don't like to talk a lot, start out with Viraday. He'll carry you, yep. and you just kind of chime in when you want to. That was what I did. I just kind of sat there and yeah, that watched. Was my, and... That was my first casting one night. I jumped in on the... I got to be a part of the Salty Saturday thing and that. Mm -hmm. I know that didn't go beautifully for me, but I thought it went pretty okay and I I've, I've learned a lot since then. It's um just need 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 to accept uh a few failures here and there and oh, learning yeah. along the way. Yeah. So, um it it's a two-part thing, right? Do you have the ability to stream first off? You know, can you do you actually have the hardware to do it? And then second, yes. finding your style, finding your rhythm. Mm -hmm. Um so I want to I want to tie those two questions together. Sorry, I'm pouring a shot. I know you guys can't see me, but um, <laughs> the next question was a good one. I was excited to get to it. I'm stalling. Um, oh, we kind of already talked about this, but uh, to touch on it again, um, with the flood of both uh, new players and potential captains. How quickly are the board members looking to expand? Are we looking at a season with similar numbers and teams competing, or will we jump into 16 or 20? Uh, we already discussed that we will have 16 teams next season. Mm -hmm. um, but the first half of that question is kind of what I want to address here. Thank you, Murdoch, by the way, for this question. Um, I don't know that we've ever looked to grow or shrink or control the numbers so much as it's – does it feel right? I mean, Cassie Slimps, you're in on those emails. Um, yeah. How would you describe it? Uh, well, I would describe it as you know. I think we see the um, the pool of free agents constantly growing. <clears throat> There's players in the league who are a part of the league who don't have teams to be on. Uh, expanding teams is very important. I think um, it gets more players playing, more matches being played, just more members who are very active within the community. Free agents are, of course, a part of the community, but they don't feel as much of a part of the community. This is changing a bit with these weekly tournaments um, and a few other things that are being talked about. But I definitely think the, the jump to 16 is good. And I think that, I mean, within this new divisional structure that we're trying out, I think that 20 teams is... Also doable if it's divisible by four. I mean, it's going to add some games to the season, but we can adjust it a bit here and there to keep those rivalries. I definitely think that um, it's a pretty quick expansion, but I I do think it feels right. And if anyone feels different, they're free to communicate that, and we yeah. we can talk about. It. But I think it feels right. You know, we're all excited about this league. Uh, we we just want more of a good thing. You know, yeah, to kind of piggyback on that with the free agent comments is. You know, our goal is to – because there's nothing worse than putting in the time and the effort because I've seen so many dudes on the thread. They're posting daily. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're out there. They're trying to reach out. They're doing all the things we're telling them to do every Thursday night to get noticed. And the truth be told, they might not end up on a team. And I can tell you for the other members of the board, we all feel that that's – we don't want that to happen. If you're out there and you're putting in the effort and you're doing what you need to do to try to get on a team, we want you to find a team. Uh, so the the issue is truly um, making sure first off logistically it works with the numbers in the league. Um, you know we we could have theoretically had 17 teams this season, um, but logistically that's a nightmare to work around. 17 doesn't work in a league with the format we'd have to change the entire formatting the formatting and there'd be uh there'd be exceptions and rules that just didn't feel right you know uh, so looking forward to next season um we're gonna have an official way to become a captain that's a little more clear cut and everybody can access uh more so than just hey i want to be a captain uh even though it was great when people expressed it um 
there's a whole process you have to go through to really understand what doing that means. And for the new guys that we have being captains this season, um, you could ask them. You know, it's not just as simple as putting guys together. There's mm-hmm. a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes that a lot of our, our captains don't get credit for. Um, but you have to be willing to make that commitment and be that kind of a leader. So if we see more captains, we will see more teams. Um, and we're really picky about who we want as a captain because we've had a couple teams over the years that well, seasons who uh, have like dropped out halfway through or just kind of stopped playing. And that is worst case scenario. So we make sure like we know we're going into this with 16 amazing captains. Oh, yeah. And we have zero worries about anybody like missing anything. And then the hope is that we can expand to something like 20 where you could keep the four division format in with like five teams and we can talk about a new playoff structure or whatever. But uh, captain quality is what we are concerned with most because we know that you can't you can have a really crappy league with a ton of really crappy teams. Or you can have a really awesome league where we're super picky about it. And so we choose the latter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So good question. Thank you uh, for throwing that out there, Murdoch. All right. So unless I see another amazing question come through, uh, this is the last one I currently have on the slate for us tonight. Uh, And this is actually a conversation that has been brought up. It's definitely something we're thinking about and addressing. um, But do you think signing players should be limited to certain times similar to what is done in professional sports? Do you think the extra time teams are allowed when they are knocked out uh, of the playoffs provides them with an advantage going into the next season? Do you think that teams going deep into the playoffs are inherently at a disadvantage because they win? Um, and also, the longer you're in the playoffs, the higher your PR cap, mm-hmm. causing you to uh, reduce your team. I have so many things to say about this, but I don't want to speak first. Oh, baby. So. Whatever. Um, <laughs> whatever. I think in a perfect world we could do that, but this is not a perfect world, and it's a league run through a website, and so it's really tough to say, hey, your team got eliminated, but hang tight uh, and wait. And the good side of that is that we, I think we can agree that for a league like this, repeat champions would get really boring. And having the same team win it every year because they're signing the best. Because, like, when a team wins it, a free agent is more likely to want to sign with them. Case in point, like, D. Lyman signed with Archon Storm this past offseason. And I think them being the returning champion had a lot to do with that. And allowing these teams that got locked out, the first dibs at free agents continues to breed that parity. And it also makes sure that the teams that are winning, if they can, they're probably going to want to stay together because they just won a lot. Or if they can't, they're going to have to come down a peg and have to compete with other teams that struggled a bit. And so it keeps the league more even, which I think is healthier overall. Uh, Alec, as coming in as a new captain, right, um, did you feel at a disadvantage? I mean, I know you have mostly your own guys already coming in, right? So you mm-hmm. knew a vast majority of your team leading into uh, the season. But did you feel – any sort of disadvantage knowing late, later in the game to say myself who was out two weeks ago um, in finding the player to finish out your team? Did you feel that those who knew two weeks ago have a better shot of getting the better players than you do? I mean, yes, definitely, right? And especially because, you know, it's like when you're in the playoffs and your team's still playing, you don't want to be recruiting, right? That's why, like, you know, even though that happens sometimes, but a lot of teams like won't let that happen. We're going to focus on the playoffs. That's all we're going to do. And then we'll figure it out afterwards. But you guys have just been like picking people left and right. So it's a little <laughs> hard to do that when our goal right now is, you know, still competing. So Slimsh, yeah, another I, new captain who's I been think, in the playoffs. I'm yes. going to wait till you talk again. I'm going to interrupt you one more time. <laughs> no, go for it. I'm no. the one. Back Go ahead, here. sir. Yeah, well, I mean, I can't speak so much to that because we got knocked we got knocked out fairly quickly, so there was plenty of time to go with this uh, this captain transition here. I got to ask uh, Jing Buddha plenty of questions to learn a little bit about the ins and outs of the the process, and um, there wasn't a whole lot to change. You know, as long as as long as the team is feeling good and a lot of players are willing to come back, then um, 
things are fairly straightforward, but I can definitely see, and I know this is the case for some of the captains who, you know, are here in the finals. They, they know that they may very well go over the PR cap and like they have this conflict of at the same time while preparing for the finals, they also have to get their feelers out, you know, to get their options open. And it, it's a very weird time because it's, uh, it's, it's hard to manage all of that. It's, it's so much time that gets committed. It's, it's difficult, and you feel like at some point it might end up costing you, you know, games within the finals and maybe even the series. But I just see it being really difficult to um, control the uh, the signing process in such a way that we could prevent this. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I have a I two-word know. response. If there's any resp- If there's any ideas about that, I'd be interested in hearing them. And maybe it's something we'll talk about. Yeah, I, I definitely think it's something that needs to be explored yeah. our rules logistics level. But I have a two-word response. Yeah. Word number one, because he there are no spaces. Super Sam. Word <laughs> number two, Twiz. For those of you who are not uh, aware, Super Sam was picked up in the last week of preseason. Yep. Yep. Mm. So all of us who ran out immediately after season and filled up our teams were punished severely. Also, uh, Twiz, who did not think he was going to be able to play last season, at the last minute was able to play, and nobody had space for him. Mm -hmm. So while I do see the disadvantage of you still being in the playoffs and picking up players, um, two of the most skilled players in the league or or, uh, within the free agent system were available and still looking – as as soon as within the week before the season started. Also, I know that there's players out there who are in the free agent market who know what they're worth and are kind of like the hot girl waiting in the corner for the guy to buy the top shelf booze. You know, they know that they're going to get picked up. They know what they're worth. And instead of coming over to Entropy, they go back to the go to casuals. Um, so uh. there are <laughs> <laughs> there are players out oh, there. Oh, man. So – Here's here's kind of the other point to this, right? Um, this whole PR cap. Are you punished for going further into the playoffs? No, you're not punished. That's how the PR cap was developed. And you're supposed to raise your PR cap by going further into the playoffs. Better players are supposed to have a better player rating. Yeah. Um, you know, some may disagree with my view on what the PR is, but that's the way I understand it. The teams that make it to the finals should end the season with a higher PR than everybody they beat. They should be the better team. Uh, This does kind of, I won't deny it, it does kind of punish you for winning. But as I watched in chat, as Cassie has said, as Slim just said here tonight, repeat champions can get boring. If you can make the cuffs and repeat and continue to be successful like Noob Central, good for you, man. You're figuring out how to work this PR system within the THL which is part of a skill set for being a captain. Um, and last but not least, yeah, how do you manage it? You know, because yeah. as we're all hanging out in Discord or we're, before Discord was up, it was Skype calls. You know, players make little comments um, that if you're not the person they're directed towards, they kind of go under the radar, right? Mm-hmm. But you could tell when somebody's trying to say, hey, and not these exact words. Hey, if I'm not on my team next season, I would like to be on your team next season. Mm. You know, you get that vibe from them, whether they say it outright or not. How do you stop that from being a thing? Yeah. You know, it can it feasible? Is there a realistic way of controlling that? Other than, hey, guys, don't do that. And if you get caught doing it, you know, you'll be punished. But can right. you be in every Skype call? Can you be in every Facebook message? Can you be in, you know, that's not the kind of organization we are. So I don't know if it can be controlled. I don't know if it should be controlled. Um, as yeah. I said, Super Salmon Twiz. Super Salmon Twiz. And as far as I'm the, fun. as far as being the, the punished for, you know, for winning the championship, there's no punishment. The, the flag you won the championship. Forever. The yeah, flag flies. Forever. flies. Yeah. Fuck. I just drain. All right. So now the time that I hate to have, 
Juan, I got drink to the flags. <laughs> yeah, you do. Um, <laughs> I did not finish the bottle, but damn it, I put a good dent in it. Um, the time I hate every week, where we have to to say our fond farewells, and we have to say our goodbyes, um, and we insert any last shameless plugs. I'd like to thank our guest, Mr. Alec, for being here. Um, Alec, your parting thoughts for the folks at home and more shameless plugging. Good luck, Cassidy. Wow. You too, man. We're going to have a lot of fun. This is classy. <laughs> we, we both know that, like, our match probably doesn't decide the series. So, like, we're just going to sit back and watch. I want it to come down to the final match. I, I like, as And as it should. Viewer, Mange versus yeah. Cutthroat? I think it should. That's a... Uh... Or no, Mange versus, versus uh, yeah, Jocelyn, yeah. my fault. But so, I think yeah, it should. That'd be awesome. And once again, that is uh, at Golden Wisp Podcast on Twitter. At GW Podcast. Or at GW Podcast. Mm -hmm. See, that's why you have to plug it. If you let me plug it, people aren't going right. to find the right spot. I got you guys on Stitcher. I like that app. All right. Nice, nice. So check out Golden Wisp. Um, Slimsh, parting thoughts for the folks at home. Uh just really, really, really exciting, crazy week of THL here. I'm really looking forward to all all the games for the finals. Salty Showdown, Wicked Wednesday was great. Tavern Talk's great. Everything about THL is just great. Yeah, it's, cra it's crazy this week. Um, yeah, I'm just really looking forward to it. I'm, I think I'm going to be casting some of these games potentially. I don't know this weekend. I know a lot of a lot of great casters are trying to get their their voice out there for these games, and I'm not very available for friday but yeah just really exciting stuff excited to um be a bigger part of the ghost of casuals i guess you could say moving forward it's a team that i've been with all along so um after the finals are said and done moving into season two it's gonna be good times. gonna be some really exciting stuff the the train will not stop even in the off season choo choo motherfuckers well said <laughs> Mr. Cassidy. What THL, was that? give us your energy because <laughs> we want to fly that flag forever. And I can honestly say I might be crying in Discord if we win the whole thing. So uh, get behind us. Show the frat house some love. And uh, we just need one more week. And it would be so cool to finally steal one here. So let's get it. As always, uh, thank you guys for tuning in to this lovely thing we do every Thursday night. As I said before, thank you to our awesome guest, Alec, for being here tonight. It was great to have a member of the Noob Central to uh, stand here against Cassie's voice, although they were very civil. Um, I would have liked to see a little more venom from those two. Classy acts. Nah. Not this week. We will I let get sacrificed, man. It's my job. <laughs> I'm expecting it to happen again. He's too nice. It's not like D lineman, you know. <laughs> <laughs> like, come oh, on. Gosh. Shots fired. Shots you've fired. Got, you've got your sacrificial lamb roll. You've got your role in fluffing up the in bulk. Yep. Oh, I'm like, like of... if we were a League of Legends team, I'd be the support, support. player. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so, if there's a uh, team rank Friday tomorrow, we'll let you know. Keep watch on the thread. Uh, salty Saturday, salty showdown on Saturday, nine o'clock, right here on uh, THL's Twitch. Salty Sunday, also right here on THL's Twitch. Uh, we'll let you know the definitive time for that in the THL Facebook. If you're a free agent and you haven't done so yet, register at TeamHearthLeague.com. For the rest of you, please come out in full force on Saturday and Sunday to support what it is we do here and continue to make this league grow. We appreciate you all so much. And we will see you next week. Hopefully, uh, we're going to look to have the entire winning team right here on Tavern Talk. So, Alec, we may be seeing you again, sir. Oh, baby. All right, let's go, noobs. Good fight. I won't be here if we lose. <laughs> yeah, Cassie might get kicked off the stream for the night. You drop down as a host. <laughs> I will not be a part of that stream. You won't show your face. All right, fellas. Um, good fight. Good night. We'll catch you.